What do you think of Andrew Tate? <laughs> you know, I think that he's done good. I watch his clips and I think that he's done a lot for, you know, some young men. I think it's I think he's an interesting figure. Um, I think he started a lot of really important conversations. Do I think that he is like a masculine role model? No, I don't. And I think partially because I just don't love that lifestyle. I'm like, I look at a man and I don't qualify his masculinity because of how rich he is or how fast of a car he has or how many like high, you know, S tier women he's able to get. Even if it's and, a Bugatti though. Well, yeah, <laughs> do not care. <laughs> but, like I would rather you drive a truck or some kind of Bronco and be a normal guy and have really great values. And like, I don't care how many cigars you smoke. And so I think that kind of turns me off a bit. Maybe that's very superficial, but I'm like, I just don't, you're not appealing to me, but I understand that guys like that. Um, and I understand that it's like, and like cool for them and that sort of thing. And maybe you can, you know, I don't know what you think about him, but I know I have guy friends who are like, oh, he's so yeah. cool. Like, he's making me feel, like, empowered. Yeah. And he's, see, he's part speaking of me, to me. Part of me is shocked that people can't see. Like, I see in terms of politics. I mm -hmm. see both sides equally. And I'm yeah. like, I love these things about this. Yeah. And I love these things about this. And we could, like, bring them together. Yeah. But I don't identify necessarily with one or the other. I yeah. just kind of pick and choose bits and pieces. Yeah. But I do the same thing with people. Mm -hmm. It's like I might disagree with some things they say, but I'm like, that one thing, I kind of like that. Yeah. And I'll pick and choose from that. Do you I think, think people have the ability his... to do that, though? Because it seems like Ugh. now it's it's less it's it's less about saying, I like this one thing about yeah. this person, and I agree with like I picking accountability. Hard. I, I think people are with... more closed-minded when they get a little bit younger, though. So like, I yeah. think like mm -hmm. our generation, Gen Z, is like, they like you either hate it's them or you or love white. them. Yeah. But for an older generation, I feel like it's... It's, it's it's much different. There's Same more older. Like I older. Am I older? You're a millennial, right? I'm millennial. Different you are techno. older. There you go. True. Um, like I got flamed. Actually, it wasn't terrible, but I definitely did see some pushback in my comments because I was talking about Jeffrey Star, and he, you know, was talking about you know gender binary and that kind of thing, and he came out and he was saying like the they them stuff it just doesn't make sense, um, and he's also spoken out against you know gender transitions for children, saying they're not ready for that, that sort of thing. And so I made a video and I said, you know, obviously this YouTuber has a lot of controversy. Controversy. He's done a lot of stuff. People hate him for many reasons, but this is something that we can commend. At least that my audience can commend. He sang protect children. There we go. And people were like, no, but he's done all this old, like other stuff. And I don't like him. I'm not like raw, raw, Jeffree Star, love all your videos. But I'm like, hey, that was a that was a good thing. And I think some, you know, conservatives also think that that means like you're bending the knee, you're compromising your values. I'm like, no, I'm not becoming a fan. I'm just acknowledging when somebody does something that, you know, might be beneficial for a listener, might open up their eyes to something new. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing with Andrew Tate, like you're saying. His lessons and his messages of, you know, taking accountability as a young man and speaking to young men and saying, I know it's hard for you right now. I know that, you know, modern feminism, you know, tells you you need to be effeminate and like all of this stuff. Like, I know it's tough, but here are some of the things that you could do. Do I like the way he speaks about women? No, I don't. I think it's very weird. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of back and forth about what he was doing in Eastern Europe or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't love the way that he's spoken about that. Like, I remember he said, you know, I think it was about sex trafficking or, or no, it was like, you know, he doesn't condone rape, but, you know, in some countries it's technically legal. So, and I was like, well, right. like there's still a moral wrong there. There's still a moral wrong. I think that kind of goes back to like, even if something's legal or whatever else still, yeah, I, I would believe that it is wrong. Um, so I obviously don't support those things, but I think he's had viral moments and I think he has started important conversations online. Maybe that's mm -hmm. how I would kind of frame it. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think he's a disruptor, and I think disruptors are extremely needed because yeah. it's super easy to That's just. That's a good go way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind and of it's like funny. he gained a lot more power than I feel like you should probably give to a disruptor just in yeah. general because usually disruptors are more extreme, and you don't want someone they super extreme to be like exactly. But there's more gravitational pull with people that are extreme like him, so it makes sense. What I noticed with Andrew Tate, people that like are around me that are like big Andrew Tate fanboys, is the fact that he kind of gave that whole victimhood mentality to dudes which a lot of people don't really see but that's what i saw because he was like mm. you know it's hard to be a dude dudes are yep. depressed at rates mm. that have never that's been seen such, before yep. and stuff like that and mm. guys are like oh my god and everybody yeah i don't want to say everybody what, wants to be a victim what, but a lot of people it's easy to be a victim because then you have yep. an excuse so people were like okay think, yeah this sounds good and then he's like but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And people are like, oh, wow, that's cool. And yeah. everybody, every dude wants to be a hero. I and he's basically teaching the fear. how to be yeah. a hero. Yeah. Yeah, but I think he, he offers some like solutions. I think he acknowledges like, ah, oh, things are tough. And I, I think you brought up an important point because 
I kind of struggle with, you know, talking to, you know, my audience of like young men and young women and saying like, you have it really bad and this like society is so screwed up, but I, I try to make it pretty even talking about like the boy crisis because I also think that there is a huge like young woman crisis like there's a reason why the majority of young people transitioning right now are girls like there's a reason why like I think girls committing suicide at a young age is now above I mean it's like girls have so many issues as like a young girl I knew what it was like I understand going through puberty and literally feeling like you don't belong in your body and what's going on and all of this stuff um but I think only telling people that you are a victim and that people hate you is not the best and so i do think with things like andrew tate it was like i wish that he had offered more solutions in a way of like all it was was like get, get rich buying my program oh, and well, also work out which is great was, yes. get, get a six pack yes. that was very yeah, interesting advice I mean, so, but but it's like I think go, it's good. but at I the mean, end of the I day agree. I agree. go, go to, to the, the gym, gym. Yeah. yeah go to the gym and bring value yeah yeah because i also get yeah. rich and get like a harem of women which yeah. I feel like is <laughs> like okay. Yeah, it's like yeah. okay. We could take what we but, what the ideas that we but want by to making serve us. money. But by making money, you are yeah. adding value in some yes. way. Uh, it can. You're be, being a productive member yeah, of society. It could be. It could bring a lot of purpose, depending on what you're doing. If you're adding value to somebody else, mm -hmm. it could be setting goals. I don't think money brings purpose. But I'm saying if, if you're doing something of value, you are making yeah. money. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Not the money itself, but like yeah. to bring value, you Unless have to be doing something to society. Something. You have to be doing something of value, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To do yeah. that. No, I think that there are really good takeaways and really poor takeaways for Tate. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I think the best way that you said it was a disruptor, and I agree, we need more of those because I think people get so caught up in this very polarized group think. Mm -hmm. And I think if one person on, you know, other sides pops through and is like, I disagree with this and it causes like massive whatever, mm -hmm. it starts conversations, whether or not that changes people's minds. I think polarizing figures like Joe Rogan is a great example. And he's somebody that's kind of wrote it really well, I think, mm -hmm. um, of like, he's unafraid to say things that are super controversial and have people on that are, you know, controversial and opening up those conversations. And he'll say something every once in a while that people are like, oh my God. But you like him so much now he's gained this audience and it's like, okay, you yeah. respect it. But I think having those people pop up is so important for this culture where everybody is so terrified to say something that is out of line.